I recently made a tweet about my top five favorite video games, so I wanted to go into more detail about those games and why I like them. I gave myself the rule of not picking more than one game per franchise. After going through the games, I'll see the commonalities between them. First, I want to give a few honorable mentions to Super Mario Bros., Final Fantasy VI, and Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which are all great games that maybe on another day I would have had them in my top five. Number 5, Persona 4 Golden. This is the newest game on the list, and I actually only just recently played this version of it. At one point, I was looking for good RPGs to play on the PS2, and came across Persona 4. I didn't know anything about it other than it had good reviews. Once I started playing it though, I was hooked, and I sunk hours into it. That was the original version that came out in 2008. The Golden version came out for the PS Vita in 2012, but I never got around to playing it since I didn't have a Vita. That was until June of this year when the game was re-released on Steam, and so I bought it. And though I haven't played all the way through it yet, I already have to concede it's the best format to play it in. It's a weird game to explain, and I think if you have any desire to play it, being blown away by how strange it is is likely a good thing. The game centers around a boy who moves in with his uncle and cousin for a year, in the small town of Inaba. He meets other kids at school and they get wrapped up in a murder mystery, which takes them into another dimension, where they fight monsters and learn to face their true selves. The game combines playstyles of a Pokemon type of RPG and a life and dating simulator, depending on which dimension the player is currently in. The plot takes a lot of influence from detective stories and the work of psychologist Carl Jung. Some of my favorite parts of the game are the music, the character interactions, and of course the overall story. Number 4, Diablo 2. When I first seen this game, I may have been too young for it, as I was only 6 when it came out. I seen my cousin playing it, and thought it seemed really cool, and I liked the way you could just keep getting stronger and stronger. I don't think I ended up getting the game until about two years later, when I got the box set with Diablo 1, 2, and the expansion Lord of Destruction. I first played Diablo 1, which was awesome, and the Butcher scared the hell out of me at that young age. I never beat the first game until going back to it much later on in life, but I then went to the second one, and my life became dedicated to leveling up my druid, all the way to level 99. I liked the options I had with what direction I wanted to take my character, which for a kid around 10 years old, what could be cooler than a werebear? I played through the entire campaign countless times, either just to level up my character or to experience it as a different character class. I still go back to play it every so often, and I now know how to better optimize my character builds. This game was also the first one I ever experimented with any type of hacking. It wasn't much, but for those who know, Jamela, am I right? My favorite parts of this game are obviously the character progression and looting, but also the atmosphere and setting. Number 3, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So of course I love Star Wars, and of all the games from the franchise, this is my favorite. This game was made by Bioware in 2003, and I would say they haven't been able to return to that glory since. This RPG is all about its storytelling and decision-making elements. The game has a unique component with how it allows the player to choose from different dialogue options, which then affect the player character's alignment with the Force, either light or dark. These choices also affect the story, potentially saving or killing certain characters and deciding the outcome of the entire galaxy. This game's story introduces some very interesting ideas to the Star Wars universe, which have actually made a comeback in the new Disney-made Star Wars material. The plot twist towards the end of the game is also one of the best in all of video games. My favorite parts of this game include the plot, the characters, and the dialogue. Number 2, Banjo-Kazooie. If you watched my Twitch streams, you might have caught me playing this game. It's just pure fun and stands up as the best 3D puzzle platformer of all time despite being the oldest game on the list having come out in 1998. 
the mechanics work really clean and make sense within the game. One issue that 3D puzzle platformers tend to have is the camera, and I think it would be tough to find one with a better camera than Banjo-Kazooie. The development of this game went through many variations and hurdles, and it's amazing that it came out as near perfect as it did. It just goes to show the amount of passion the creators had for this game. Everything just has more polish than you would generally find from other games coming out around that time that weren't made by Nintendo. Each of the characters have very unique personalities, even small characters that only make brief appearances. Some of my favorite aspects of the game are the music, personality, and the mechanics. Number one, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. As a kid, this game creeped me out due to its eerie atmosphere, but I still played it anyways because I was so intrigued by it. The success of the previous title, Ocarina of Time, meant that Nintendo wanted another Zelda title on the Nintendo 64 before the end of its life cycle. This short time span led to the creators needing to push their creativity to the max in order to come out with a satisfying game in so short a time, and boy did it work. Despite using the same engine as Ocarina of Time, the game actually plays very differently. The game uses a time mechanic where the player plays through the same three days over and over again in a Groundhog Day-esque cycle. As you journey through, you learn more about the world and gain new items to help in preventing the moon from falling into the land of Termina at the end of the third day. One other new mechanic the game introduces is the use of masks. Each mask has a unique ability, such as transforming Link into different forms, running faster, or making him invisible. The game's strongest aspect to me is just the atmosphere. With the impending doom, we always see the moon drawing ever nearer, and the citizens of Termina are all dealing with it in different ways. One of my favorite examples of this is the swordsman, who on day one is confident and feels he can save the town, but if you find him at the end of day three, he is scared hiding in a corner. The citizens have a lot going in these three days, and doing something on day one can start a chain of events through the next two days. One of these stories is at the ranch. The young girl Romani warns that they are coming to take their cows. If you protect the ranch that night, the next night you can catch a ride to the town on their milk delivery. The milk cart gets attacked by bandits from a rival ranch, so Link must defend it. However, if you didn't protect the ranch on night one, the cows will have been taken, and Romani will be acting very peculiar. So of course, my favorite aspects of this game include the atmosphere, music, characters, and the mechanics. So now let's look at what these games have in common. Firstly, other than Persona, these each came out between 1998 and 2003, when I was between the ages of 5 and 10, so it's likely that nostalgia plays a big part in my favorite games. Other than Banjo-Kazooie, each of these games have RPG elements, which makes sense as I would generally call that my favorite genre. Two things each of these games have in common are their atmosphere, and adding to that atmosphere is the soundtrack. While writing my posts, I normally listen to soundtracks, and I've listened to each one of these games' soundtracks while writing at some point. Much like with books or films, I think a video game should either be fun or interesting, and I think each of these games blend fun and interesting throughout very well. If anyone hasn't played these games yet, I would recommend them to everyone as they are all good and have stood the test of time. Thank you for watching.